Hi everybody and welcome to the news from the ANU Medical School from today the 29th of May 2020. As you know this week is National Reconciliation Week and I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we meet on here, uh, the Ngunnawal people and pay my respect to their elders past, present and emerging. The theme of this year's Reconciliation Week is in this together. And this is really a time to learn, share and explore on how to contribute to the achieving reconciliation in Australia with all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. The day before Reconciliation Week starts is National Sorry Day, and that was uh, this week as well. And this is a time to come together and share ideas and steps towards healing for the stolen generation and for their families and their communities. And here are the answers to last week's quiz. It wasn't that hard. The person that uh, I was after is um, Professor Frank Bowden. Frank was the uh, first professor of medicine here at the medical school. He's an infectious disease specialist. He is from Melbourne and therefore the link to AFL. He's uh, very passionate about AFL. Did his training in Melbourne and spent some of his training uh, in the Northern Territory before he came to us in Canberra. And Frank has held quite a few senior positions, not just as the Professor of Medicine here within medical school, but within the health services. Um, he was the Acting Director of Medical Services, he was the advisor to the Minister, and recently Frank has been um, at Calvary Hospital as a Director of Medical Services there. Very sadly for us, but probably good for Frank and his family, he's decided uh, to retire and move back to Victoria, where I'm told he's uh, bought a bit of a property and is taking some time out to learn how to ride a tractor. Um, what is Frank most known for, apart from the two books that he's published? Uh, he's also most famous for uh, a um, rendition of Psycho Killer at one of the uh, graduate balls. Um, and as I said, Frank likes AFL. He is um, also, or was, uh, up and an up and coming um, soccer player. Unfortunately, the game, last game that he ever played, was against the medical students who took him out. I do understand broke some ribs, but that was the end of his very promising soccer career. Anyway, uh, congratulations to the winner. That was uh, Professor Desmond Yip. Here's this week's quiz, and again, you have to think a little bit laterally and related to coronavirus. So what I'd like to know is who is this man here behind me? What did he invent and when did he do that? Good luck, please email me and I will see how you can think um, coronavirus um, in relation to this quiz. As you know, there is a plan from ANU to return to campus and this is really just an update for you. Um, of the work that we've been doing over the last two or three weeks, which is mainly developing protocols, risk forms, um, get more information on room occupancy and sign-in sheets, um, and to develop an anatomy lab plan, um, as well as developing a form that every ANU employed staff and every student will have to sign. Uh, this work has been going on, as I said, for the last two weeks, and I'd really like to express my deep, deep gratitude and thank you to Wendy Diamond, Prue Rolf and Tim Burrows who have been outstanding in developing these forms. They have been um, sent to the college's Workplace Health Safety Committee and have been accepted. So we will be able to commence our clinical skills, learning and teaching for the Year 4s on the 8th of June. The requirements for everybody is to um, at least consider to do the online infection control training. This is for staff, students will have to do that. So to all the year four students that you're starting very soon with your clinical skills training, we need to see evidence um, that you have completed this training. Please also either download the COVID Safe app or keep a diary and we will put some information out on a template that you should be able to use. Uh, we will send you the forms that have to be signed, which also ask you to acknowledge um, that you have read quite a few of the policies that are on the ANU website um, and the Return to Campus website gives you quite a bit of information on that. You may have seen in my staff email that we are looking to find some evidence of our contribution to the COVID-19 response. 
Um, we so far only have the contribution of um, a few people, mainly involved in research, but also in secondments. But I know that there are more of you who have contributed that we may not be aware of, uh, whether this is around committee membership, advisory roles, um, any kind of publications in, in the media, uh, whether you've written a report, done some webinars or whatever not. Please let us know. Email barb.karapi at anu.edu.au. She's collating all this evidence and then we can put that up on the website. We will do the same for the bushfire and the hail response. Um, so you'll get an email from me as well. And it is important for us to actually put out there what the work is that we're doing outside of teaching in a medical school. You will also find two new stories on our website about some of our HDR students. One is uh, the story of Yvette Wolf, who is very close, I understand, to uh, completing her PhD. Uh, she was somebody who was thinking of becoming a medical doctor uh, until PhD took over and her love for science was discovered. And Yvette talks about life and the PhD during a pandemic. The other story is uh, Sally Hall's story. Sally is a clinician and uh, trained in management, um, and she's also doing a PhD with, uh, with us, but has used or has been used or maybe used the opportunity uh, to do something different during the uh, COVID-19 crisis, and she's working with the Department of Health at the moment, and she's talking about opening doors to opportunities. Just gives you a little bit of an idea of how flexible our students are. In the media, uh, again, we've been represented a lot. Dr. Robert Schmidley, who's a senior lecturer at the medical school um, and who's a very, very good piano player, is talking about isolation, salvation, and how he has used the time of isolation to do what he really loves, which is playing the piano. But not only that, he has also recorded his sessions and made them available to others. Some of you may have tuned into the webinar this week, which was around value-based healthcare transformation. And whilst it was great to hear a little bit about that, um, what I thought was most fascinating was to hear Professor Marco Kidd and uh, Dr. Nick Coltsworth talk about um, values and how they were used to drive Australia's COVID-19 response. Those two, again, have been in the media this week, as well as uh, Sanjaya and Peter, and details are on my staff email from a few days ago. Tonight, um, there will be a documentary um, that you can stream in. This is running at six o'clock with a QA and a at eight o'clock. It is entitled, In My Blood It Runs. And it is really um, about the dreams, hopes and rights of um, adolescent Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander in Australia. Um, the link for you to tune in is here. Just a pre-announcement. The Medical Education Council, which is a subgroup of the medical deans, will run a webinar on the 18th of June at 6 o'clock, and it will be around uh, learning during COVID. They may call it ACDC, after COVID, during COVID. And this will probably be a panel discussion with lots of students from around Australia um, for them to tell us really what they learned, how they learned, and uh, what they think this learning has resulted in for their future career as um, doctors. Um, some of you may have also tuned into the Vice Chancellor's Forum that was running this week, and there will be more for our health, I understand, over the next few weeks, particularly talking about the budget. The Mental Health First Aid course that I've talked about um, a few times now uh, is finally going to be offered um, to our third year students. Um, so we have funding from the Medical Deans of Australia and New Zealand for two years, one year cohort each. And this year we will offer this to the th our third year students. Within the school and particularly um, within the phases, we are uh, this week and over the next few weeks mainly worrying about exams, the format of the exams and the timing of the exams. We have also been speaking to the Policy and Practice Associate Dean. Um, this is Emily Lonchar, not Langsar, as most of you would say. Um, and uh, we're trying to set up some focus groups um, to talk to her and to her team um, because she needs to hear what kind of contribution our school members, academics make, 
um, to policy and particularly tr translating that policy into practice. Some of you may have tuned in last night when I uh, gave a presentation to the whole school. If you haven't been able to, you should have received an email today with a link so you can look at the presentation and listen to the questions that were asked. And what I mainly talked about, um, apart from return to placement, um, was the budget. You would have read in the papers or seen from the Vice-Chancellor's email that ANU has taken a big financial hit. Uh, this was hailstorms, bushfires and COVID and needs to make up $225 million and $100 million of that needs to be made in savings from expenditure. The College of Health and Medicine will have to carry a large burden around 10 million or 11 million dollars or so and this will be distributed across the four schools and the College of Health and Medicine as an entity as well. We don't exactly know the details yet um, but you can imagine that um, this is very serious that we need to think about some savings that we can make see if we can raise some revenue but we will particularly look at our expenses and see where we can cut that back a bit. This is going to be painful. Um, it is not up to just me to decide where we're going to make the savings. So if you've got any ideas, any thoughts, um, anything where you think you can help um, or um, make some savings in what you do or how you do it, I would love to hear from you. Katrina Chapel, the school manager and I will meet with some of the groups um, next week and we'll stick our heads together and see whether we can come up with some solutions to make a saving which maybe around the 10% mark of our total budget. So that was all from me uh, this week. Uh, please remember, although we don't have any coronavirus in the ACT, uh, there is still coronavirus in Australia. Um, stay home if you're unwell, follow the testing guidelines, wash your hands, maintain your social distancing, look after yourself, but particularly look after your friends and your family as well. Email any comments, uh, as usual to the usual email um, have a great weekend and I shall see you next week bye bye